Crocker, and right now. Rock, rock. Stop that noise. Can't you see that I'm busy? I've just invented a secret formula for making gold. Before you know it, I'll be a millionaire, maybe even a trillionaire. Even a dumb bird like you will be able to make real gold with this formula. <laughs> While it's cooking, watch this story about a man who was just like me. He loved gold, too. While searching for a shortcut from England to Asia, Captain Martin Frobisher's ship was battered by a severe storm, which blew it far into Arctic waters. There was very little food and water left, and the crew could no longer stand the biting cold. The sight of huge icebergs so close to the ship terrified them, and the men threatened Frobisher with mutiny unless he turned back. Frobisher decided to look for a place to land where he could find provisions. As they approached shore, a group of Eskimos in kayaks paddled toward their ship. Never having seen an Eskimo or a kayak before, they feared that they were being attacked by strange sea creatures who were half man and half boat. When they realized that they were not sea creatures, but men in boats, they followed the Eskimos to the beach. Seeing the guns and swords, the Eskimos were in no mood for friendship. Thinking the Englishmen were about to attack, the Eskimos acted to protect themselves. Suddenly, and without warning, they charged at the astonished English in savage hand-to-hand -hand combat. When it was over, the Eskimos had captured five Englishmen and their longboats, leaving Frobisher with only 13 crewmen. Captain Frobisher was infuriated by the sight of his men being chased by the Eskimos. In a fit of wild rage, he leaned over the rail and lifted an Eskimo, kayak and all, out of the water and onto the deck of his ship. By golly, that Frobisher fellow sure had a terrible temper. I wouldn't like to get him mad. Wow. Frobisher's captured Eskimo was a sensation in England. The English had never seen an Eskimo. By his appearance, they thought he was an Asian. This led them to believe that Frobisher had found the passage to Asia. On his next expedition, Frobisher spent more time searching for gold than in searching for a shortcut to Asia. As they walked inland over rough ground, Frobisher suddenly tripped over a rock. When he picked it up to examine it, he and his crew were amazed to find it covered with golden specks. Frobisher was certain that he had stumbled on a gold mine. To get the men to work hard at digging the ore, Frobisher promised them each a share of the fortune. In order to make room for the ore, the crew tossed all the cargo overboard. The excited crew dug day and night until they had taken hundreds of tons of ore from the earth. And when it seemed that the ship might sink from its heavy overload, the happy Englishman set sail for England. As soon as he arrived, Frobisher rushed happily to a chemist with a sample of his precious gold. He wanted to find out how much it was worth. Martin Frobisher was stunned by the chemist's report. After all he and his crew had gone through, what he thought was a fortune in gold turned out to be iron pyrites, otherwise known as fool's gold, just worthless dirt. <laughs> if Frobisher had my formula, he could make his own gold. All he'd have to do is... <laughs> Forget that gold stuff. Get busy and invent me some new feathers before I freeze to death. Rawr. My goodness, there's nothing worse than a cold parrot with a hot temper. <laughs> oh. <laughs>